Good morning. I uh, come to you this morning and I'm going to cover all three of our math concepts for this week. We're going to cover rectangles, uh, uh, quadrilaterals, and polygons. I'm going to just do them all in one lesson, so this one may be a little bit longer than you're normally used to, but we can cover everything and that way if you want to move on ahead and get some of your work done early, it's fine. And remember class, <clears throat> I'm simply introducing these concepts to you. Uh, I don't know that you'll understand everything and that's okay. It's mostly so that when you go to fourth grade next year uh, and Ms. Stobart introduces these concepts, it won't sound quite so foreign to you. And most of this you're going to pick up pretty quickly. Some of this you may have already had, so some of it may sound like a uh, review to you. But let's go ahead and get started. We'll start off first of all with rectangles. Now, rectangles are all around us. We've got rectangles everywhere around us. We can look around the, the classroom, you can look around your house, and you're going to find rectangles. Walls, doors, book covers, all kinds of things. Uh, papers, a lot of things are rectangles. Now, the question comes in, how can you tell if something is a rectangle? So here's some things that you need to look for. First of all, rectangles are flat. They are a flat drawing. Uh, a box is not a recti rectangle, <clears throat> but the sides of the box may be a rectangle. A rectangle has four sides. Uh, other shapes also have four sides. So just having four sides doesn't necessarily mean that something is a rectangle. Uh, the way to tell if it's a rectangle is if it has four square corners. Now I'm going to be drawing on the board today and you know what my drawings are like so bear with me. Now uh, the square corners of a rectangle are called right angles. In fact that's what the word rectangle means. It means right angle shape. So a drawing like this, something that looks like this, and I'll, I'll draw as neatly as I can, that has four right angles. We learned about angles. That is a rectangle. Okay. Now, a square a lot of times is also considered a rectangle. I know that sounds a little bit confusing. It was confusing to me the first time that I heard it, but it is considered a rectangle simply because it has the four right angles. So that's the, that's, that's the determining factor. That's the way that you determine, that's the way that you tell if something is a rectangle or not. Now you have a practice sheet. Uh, it's not a whole lot, just I think it's just one page, uh, maybe a front and back, you can look and see, uh, just to identify right now. That's all we're doing right now. We're just simply identifying what is and what is not a rectangle. Let me draw another shape up here. Let me draw another shape. You might see a shape like that. As a matter of fact, you're going to see a shape like this in one of the next lessons. Let's look at this shape. Well now, this shape has four sides and it's flat. One, two, three, four. But that's not a rectangle. And the reason why is because it does not have four right angles. Remember, a rectangle must have four right angles. This one actually has uh, some obtuse and some acute angles in it. You have an angle here which that's an acute angle. You have an angle here, that's an obtuse angle. You have an angle here, that's another acute angle. And you got an angle here, which is another obtuse angle. So there are not four right angles. So in order for it to be a rectangle, it must have four right angles. Not only four sides, but four 
right angles. Now, as I told you, uh, and I'll try to I'll try to draw a square as best I can. And let me see if I can do that. Okay, that's a square, and we're going to always call it a square, but it is also identified as a rectangle simply because it has four right angles. Okay. So yes, it's a square, but it's also a rectangle. Remember, rectangle simply remains, means that it has four right angles. Okay. Now I know most of the time when we think of a rectangle, we think of an object that looks much like this, where that has one side or two sides rather longer than the others. And that's normally a rectangle. But the main thing is, is that it has four right angles. Okay, four right angles. That identifies a rectangle. And it's flat. If you have a picture of a box, that's not a rectangle. If you have a picture that looks much like this, you remember I showed you how to draw a cube back before uh, we got out of school? Or we weren't in the classroom, not really out of school, we weren't in the classroom. Remember I showed you how to draw a cube? It looks like this. Now, that shape, yes, that's a square, that's a rectangle. It's got four, but when we do this, and we make it three-dimensional, now it's no longer a what we would consider a rectangle. Now, the sides are rectangles, they're flat, but the shape itself is considered a box. Now this is a cube, but it is, this, this is considered three-dimensional. So it is not what we would consider a rectangle. The sides, yes, or faces. Uh, if you wanna get really in depth about it, these are the faces, it's much like on a, on a pair of dice or a die. Uh, the faces, Yes, those are squares or rectangles. They have four right angles. But the shape itself is not a rectangle. That becomes something else. Now I'm gonna pause it right here just for a moment and I'm gonna to go to the next lesson. So let me pause it. Okay, the next concept that we're going to look at is the concept of what's called a parallelogram. Let me write that on the board for you. Parallelogram, okay? Now, I don't know, you may not have ever heard this term before. A parallelogram, and, and the reason this is important is because we don't want to mix up parallelograms with rectangles because sometimes they look very similar. You have to look very closely, okay? Uh, the parallelogram is a four-sided figure, but a par parallelogram does not have right angles, okay? It has sides that are parallel. It's a four-sided flat shape that has two pairs of parallel sides. In other words, they run together, okay? So a parallel, parallelogram, it's still a flat shape, flat shape, I'm gonna underline this, it's a flat shape, Okay, so it is flat, not a box, not a cube, not anything. It's a flat shape. In other words, it's something that's drawn, okay? It's a flat shape. It has two pairs of parallel sides. Now let me show you what that means. Okay, so that you'll be able to identify. And again, all you're doing on your work, now you may be figuring out perimeter of parallelograms, and perimeter is perimeter. You simply add all the sides together, okay? You add all four sides, that gives you the perimeter. 
you can actually find the area, area of a parallelogram. You simply multiply the length times the width, okay? And that gives you the area. So you can actually find the area of a parallelogram just like you can find the area of a uh, rectangle. And in a moment, I'm gonna talk about polygons. Now polygons, a little bit different. Polygons actually really more so deal with just the identification of the shapes, okay? But you can find the perimeter, you can find the area of each one simply by following the formula. Remember that your formulas, and I'm gonna erase this, Remember that your formula for perimeter, and I'll use P to mean perimeter. Remember that your formula for solving perimeter is side plus side plus side plus side. Okay? That's your formula for finding perimeter. Simple as that. Just add all the sides together. That'll tell you how far it is all the way around it. Remember your formula for area. A is length times width. And you're only multiplying two numbers there, okay? So if you're asked to find the area or the perimeter, you can still do so. Now, a lot of times what we're doing right now, class, is uh, if they ask you to find the area, a lot of times they'll go ahead and draw the squares in for you. It just makes it a little easier. Uh, as far as perimeter goes, they'll just give you the length. Uh, they might even just give you the length of two sides, okay? Just add those numbers together. And, but make sure you go all the way around, okay? Make sure that you Remember that the two long sides are going to be the same length, the two short sides are going to be the same length, or if it's a square type shape, all four sides are going to be the same length. So you can still find perimeter and area if you're asked to do it. Now, a parallelogram, unlike a rectangle, has two parallel or two pairs of parallel sides. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. I drew this figure just a moment ago. It looked kind of like this. Okay. That's a parallelogram. It does not have right angles. Okay. But it has two pairs of parallel sides. In other words, the two sides continue in the same direction infinitely. That's simply what that means when it says they're parallel. In other words, this side, if I was to draw this line on out, would just continue this way and this way. Same thing here. This side would continue and continue. Now what that means, parallel means they do not intersect. In other words, they don't come together. Now yes, these two sides do, but, but that's something else, okay? Parallel means that they run the same direction, but they don't come together, okay? And it's just like with these. These two sides, would continue to go this way and this way, just like that. So that's how you can tell if it is a parallelogram. If you can continue to draw the sides out and they don't intersect, that means the sides are parallel, okay? Now, let me give you a shape that is not a parallelogram. And again, I'm going to draw this the best that I can. Okay. Okay. That's not a parallelogram. It kind of looks like one. And yes, it has one pair of sides that are parallel, but that's these sides. This, this side. And this side will continue on. 
but this side and this side, this side and this side, these two don't run in a straight line. They go, they, they will continue to spread out. And then this part will actually intersect at some point. So it's only got one pair of parallel sides. It is not a parallelogram, okay? It's not a parallelogram. Um, if, uh, that's like I said, a parallel parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides, okay? Now, that means that a rectangle actually is a parallelogram. A square is as well. Let me show you what I mean, okay? Let me show you. Here's a square. Or as close to the square as Mr. Haynes can get, okay? This side will continue to run this in this direction. Same thing here. In a straight line. Again, okay, it's a straight line. Not, not the line Mr. Haynes draws, okay? I try to draw as straight as I can. Y'all know, okay? The same thing with these sides. Okay? So, yes, a rectangle and a square can be parallelograms, okay? Uh, because they do have two pairs of parallel sides. Parallel simply means they run in the same direction, but they don't cross each other or intersect. Same thing here, okay? Now, again, the difference between a rectangle and a parallelogram, a rectangle has four right angles. In other words, the vertices, and that's what you call the corners, that's the vertices, okay? Make a right angle. Parallelogram, they don't. The vertices make acute and obtuse angles, but they both have two pairs of sides that are parallel. Now a moment ago I told you that you could find perimeter and area and we'll just concentrate on perimeter just for a moment. Let me, let me just remind you of how that works. Let me, uh, let me just draw a simple parallelogram, okay? Okay. We can find the perimeter. Let's say that this side is five inches and this side is eight inches. And remember that in perimeter, this side and this side are gonna be the same. So those that's five inches and five inches. So we got five inches plus five inches, because you get two sides that are parallel. This side is eight inches, which means that this side is eight inches as well. And then we simply add them together. Five plus five is 10, 10 plus eight is 18. 18 plus eight would be 26 inches. So that's gonna be 26, now I know it's not, but for our purposes, that's 26 inches around. Now remember with area, all you need is a side of the width and the length. Okay, so I can find the area. Area would simply be five inches times eight inches, okay, which would be 40 square square inches, okay? Now remember, when you find area, it is in squares, or it's square inches, or square feet, or square yards, or square kilometers, whatever, whatever you're using, okay? So again, you can find area, you can find perimeter. I'm gonna pause it right here, and now we're gonna go to the latter part of the lesson, and that is on uh, polygons.